Hey guys, so every single week me and Tegan go live on Facebook and we do this thing called Fresh Cat Friday Live where we talk about mushrooms and just kind of connect with the uh, Fresh Cat community. So I thought it'd be fun to share those videos here on YouTube as well. Uh, it's gonna be a little different from the typical content that you see on this channel. It's all about growing mushrooms, but it's still gonna be super mushroom focused. This week we're talking all about reishi mushroom, which is just an amazing medicinal mushroom. I actually got a big one here behind me and you'll see that in the video as well. So hopefully you get some value out of these videos and we can carry on our mission of sharing the magic of mushrooms. I'm going to be posting these videos every Saturday and then uh, we're going to be doing some of the more regular content during the week. So hopefully you enjoy this episode all about the reishi mushroom. We are live. Happy Friday everybody. Happy Friday. And happy both Canada Day belated and uh, July 4th coming up tomorrow. Yeah. So to all our American friends, happy July 4th, and to everybody in Canada, uh, happy Bladed Canada Day. We're back by the big reishi, and we have some small reishis in front of us too. So I thought it'd be fun uh, to talk about reishi, uh, talk about some of the benefits, some of the cool ways in which it grows, and some other stuff. But first, I did want to mention something. Uh, we have had a lot of people asking us about shroomies. So we are out of stock on shroomies. We are still out of stock on shroomies, unfortunately, and probably for another couple weeks. But so, we are working hard to get it back in stock so you can get it into your little furry friends' lives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get some mushrooms for those dogs. So that is coming. It's not discontinued. Just to have to stay patient. Yeah. Yeah, we're always talking about both Amazon and our website. But here's what you can do. You can go to, uh, you go to our website and go to the Shroomies product page. I'll, I'll probably put a link in, in this uh, video somewhere. And you can enter your email address. And then as soon as it's back in stock, you'll get an email notification that says, hey, back in stock and uh, I'll probably add a discount on there too because uh, people have been waiting so patiently. Uh, but it's great because Shroomies was a new product uh, that we launched late fall, I think just around before Christmas. And it really took off. People love it. Dogs mm -hmm. love it. So we're really, really happy and I guess being out of stock just means that um, people were loving it. So that's really cool and we're really excited to um, get it back out there. There you go. And maybe there's more stuff coming from dogs. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so this here in front of me is reishi mushroom. And this giant thing behind us is also reishi mushroom. So I thought it'd be really fun to talk about some of the different ways that reishi grows. Um, reishi is absolutely magnificent in how it grows. It's super tenacious. Um, it's different from any other mushroom I've ever seen in terms of the ways that it just grips onto whatever it's growing. It grows really fast. The mycelium grows really fast and it's really strong and it's really cohesive in how it holds all sorts of things together. In fact, um, there was a, a someone in, in the States, I forget, at some university, but they actually built a boat. They built a canoe out of reishi mycelium. Basically, they just let the mycelium go throughout the, the sawdust, glue everything together, and they actually made a boat and took it on the water and went canoeing and stuff. So Yeah, so that would be this part that they made the boat out of. Right. And it is solid. So yeah. if you did get it into a form or the shape of a boat, it would be so hard to break it apart. Right. Yeah, it's right. just solid. And I mean, this is not typically the way you'd cultivate reishi mushrooms. Um, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Typically, they're grown on logs and they're grown kind of outdoors in these big greenhouses or shade houses and they'll come out of the, the natural logs and form these big conks. These are kind of these simulated logs. This is basically hardwood sawdust. And these ones were just kind of left to their own volition and the reishi decided it wanted the fruit. So we didn't actually fruit this, but this one, uh, the reishi actually just yeah, can show powered it. through the top of the bag and um, just ripped through right through the zip tie and just started growing. And it initially it comes out as a little, what you'd call an antler, which is kind of like this little finger-like projection. It doesn't look like much is happening. And then the top of that will start to, to grow out into what's called a conch. And that's what's happening on top here. And this one. So this one just decided to grow right through the filter patch. So all of these bags have Bag a filter. Still shut. Yeah. yeah. All these bags have a filter so that mycelium can breathe while it's growing through the substrate. And this one, the ratio decided just to pound through that filter, which is really, really cool. And you see all that brown stuff uh, underneath, that is reishi spores. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit as well. So, reishi spores. isn't that cool? I don't think it's in focus, but it's actually pretty thick. I don't know if you can see it on my finger, but yeah. There's a reishi spores. It's very and thick. Show the top of it again, Tegan. 
So you can see that the color is kind of this lighter tan brown, and then this one I have over here is even even lighter. Um, but eventually what it does, I mean, there's lots of different species species of reishi, uh, but this is red reishi, Ganoderma lucidum, and uh, you can see eventually they turn this nice, beautiful red color, um, and sometimes they turn a much darker uh, color, kind of like this one here. Yeah. So reishi is a phenomenal mushroom. It's probably the most popular mushroom uh, worldwide in terms of medicinal mushrooms, in terms of how much the mushroom has grown and sold and consumed. Um, and it's been used for hundreds if not thousands of years. It has a super long history. In fact, uh, this mushroom, reishi, uh, was given the name, a couple different names. One of them is the queen of mushrooms because it's, you know, the, the big dog in terms of medicinal mushrooms, but it's also called the mushroom of immortality. Um, for its way it can support you know whole body health and immunity and vitality and longevity and all that kind of stuff but there's lots of other cool things that reishi mushroom is used for and we're going to talk about a few of those things today yeah and did you know that it's also called the spirit mushroom i did know because of its uh, support with insomnia yeah yeah so cool spirit mushroom because it's supposed to kind of relax the spirit right and help people uh, sleep a little bit better um, and there actually is a lot of studies done on all sorts of stuff. One, one of the main things that um, you'd be familiar with too is the way that reishi uh, is used to support um, allergies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so there was one study that we were looking at, I don't know if you want to talk about it a little bit, but it was uh, a blend of reishi mushroom that helped with a certain type of allergy. Yeah, they were looking at, it was reishi mushroom combined with eight other herbs and they used it in the mouse model and they found it really... Um, significant reduction in peanut allergy, yeah, anaphylactic peanut allergy. Yeah, I so mean, they've done some studies at on um, a human level um, with some different success. So I think it's still being looked at as a potential. I know it it is being used in a combination with oral immunotherapy for the treatment or the I guess not treatment but prevention of anaphylactic reactions in a peanut allergy, other nut allergies. So it's a very interesting spot. A very interesting thing. So, and I think the reishi mushroom, which was a decoction, was forty six percent of that formula. Yeah, and it was a it was a water extract of the yeah. reishi mushroom too. A water extract of the fruiting body, uh, which is really cool. So um, sometimes you'll see reishi mycelium or mycelium grain supplements, but a lot of this research is done on the fruiting body of medicinal mushrooms, and there's. Uh, lots of anecdotal evidence of people using reishi for kind of seasonal allergies and that kind of stuff. Just because of the way it supports the immune system, helps modulate the immune system. And it's an anti-inflammatory. Right. Yeah, so it helps that inflammatory response. Which would be tied to seasonal allergies, right? Yeah. That's really neat. Um, yeah, just an amazing mushroom. And, and again, going back to what you're talking about with the spirit mushroom. So th this is, again, something they've done studies on with uh, aqueous extracts or water extracts of the fruiting body on rats and mice and they found that it actually does extend their sleep cycles which is really cool because one of the ways that people use reishi is to help kind of regulate sleep so it helps them get back into a better kind of sleep routine helps people relax um, so really cool lots of lots of amazing things this mushroom can do and i'm sure there's lots more to be discovered mm -hmm. yeah yeah so one of the other things Stephen was showing you as well uh, the spores. The reishi spores, which I have a little pile on the counter here from my finger. Yeah, I think this is so cool. If you ever see a, a reishi farm where they're growing it, because um, reishi is one of these mushrooms that's very special because it's not just the fruiting body that's used for medicinal purposes, but the spores as well. And that's yeah. pretty unusual. You don't see that for any other uh, medicinal mushroom. But a reishi mushroom can produce billions of spores every single day. And if you collect them, uh, on the inside of the spore has all sorts of beneficial medicinal compounds. Now, if you're just to eat the spores or put the spores in hot water, not going to do a whole heck of a lot with you because those, those beneficial compounds are like locked in tight inside the spore. So how do they get those beneficial compounds out for people to get the benefit from? Yeah, so they do what's called cracking the reishi spore. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. There's like a, um, uh, an extraction or CO2 method, I believe. I'm not super familiar with that method. But there's also just a milling method where basically they run reishi spores through a super tight mill and under pressure it cracks them open makes those beneficial compounds available and then you know the end powder doesn't look all that much different but they've been cracked and, and able to be bioavailable for for people yeah so really cool and that's why sometimes you'll see some reishi mushroom products that have both spores and uh fruiting body, fruiting body extract yeah. yeah so it's really cool um so besides the spores, um, in the fruiting body, there's also other active compounds. Right. 
So those would be the polysaccharides, the beta-glucans, and the triterpenes. Right. I think, what is it? They've discovered over 130 different triterpenes. Yeah, there's like a, a, yeah. a ton of them. Um, and I won't even pretend to be able to name them all. But yeah, basically, <laughs> triterpenes and polysaccharides, mainly uh, fungal beta-glucans, which are the polysaccharides in uh, all mushrooms, uh, all medicinal mushrooms. Um, and there's different ways that those are made more bioavailable. So triterpenes, for example, are fat-soluble or uh, alcohol soluble, so they are extracted with alcohol extraction, which is why sometimes you'll see a dual extract with uh, reishi mushroom products, because it makes a little bit of sense to pull those out. Mm -hmm. um, although they will still be available in the other extracts, they just might not be as, as bioavailable. Um, but speaking, I mean, traditionally, the way that reishi would be used would be to make a decoction, or to make a tea, right? Yeah. You take the fruiting body, you do your best to kind of rip it up because it's super tough. Even if you take a knife to it, uh, you got a better chance of cutting yourself yeah, open. Yeah, it's and... very tough, very hard. Right. It's like woody. The texture, it's almost like, if you let it dry, you can almost crack kind of like wood. Um, but anyways, you, you, you take that fruiting body, you'd split it up into a bunch of pieces, and you'd put it in hot water, simmer it in hot water for a number of hours and pull out all of those water-soluble um, beneficial compounds, which is what we have right here. And I'll just show you quickly. So this is um, a nice kind of tan color, and this is all chunks of fruiting body from antlers of reishi mushroom that we had harvested not that long ago. And I guess if we're talking about antlers, I can just kind of show you yeah. quickly what that is. This is a weird looking fruiting block, so don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Something kind of fused together. Um, but these, these projections are called antlers, whereas these big ones are, are called conchs. So that's the difference there. Yeah. I think this formed, you can see, it also formed this shape under the bag. So this would have right. formed under the bag. Yeah. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. It's beautiful. It always for goes in all these different cool shapes. So Yeah, so if someone wanted to make one at home, you would take the fruiting body, you get it into little pieces as small as you can, and then you simmer it for a few hours on the stove, and then you are ready to have a hot water extracted reishi mushroom tea, I guess you could call it. Yeah, exactly. I mean this and we just boiled that up this morning. Are yeah. we gonna have some? Yeah, we should have some. All right. We should have some. That's good. That's good? Yeah. So one of the things about, reishi is a medicinal mushroom. It's a popular medicinal mushroom, but it's not a gourmet mushroom. No. <laughs> reishi is extremely bitter. Yes. And it's bitter because of those beneficial compounds have that bitter taste to it, right? Yep. Um, but actually when you when you make just kind of a hot water, depending on how much reishi you use, the taste, it, 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 it can be okay. It's not extraordinarily bitter all the time. Um, but yeah. But it is normal for it to be bitter. So. It is totally. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. This is really warm still. It is very hot still. I can feel it. Mm. Bitter? Yeah. A little bitter at the end when yeah. you swallow. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still kind of nice, right? It mm. has that earthy it's flavor. Earthy. Yep. Definitely earthy. And it, it's easy to make. So you basically just take the chunks of reishi and you boil it on, not boil it, sub-boiling, so simmering. Because you don't want to boil it at a high boil for too long. Somewhere between like, you know, 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, which Fahrenheit, I don't know, 190, something like that. Somebody can do those calculations. <laughs> I don't really know. So, yeah. So there you go. This is, yeah. Yeah. Reishi tea. Reishi tea. So if you have any questions about reishi um, or about medicinal mushrooms in general, feel free to ask. I don't think we can see the comments on this video, but um, no. I always check them afterwards and, and try to go through and answer people's questions if they have any. But maybe you could... Quickly... If I can figure out how to get to it, <laughs> yeah. then we can... Hey, check. there we are. You can see it now. Oh. We're live. There we go. Oh, five comments. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yep, looks thick. I'm assuming that is the spores, yes? Thank you, Angela. Yep. Uh, what about carving a bowl from the... That, that would be cool. Yeah. I don't know if you could carve a bowl, but no, what you could do is you would form a bowl shape. Yeah. With, uh, say, hardwood sawdust. I've seen it done for lights and different things. They make lampshades. Okay. So it's like an outer bowl and you line all your constituents inside and then you place an inner so it won't fall in. Okay. And then you can make lampshades and I forget the name of the company and you can buy kits to make your own mushroom mycelium lampshade. That's pretty interesting. Ecovative? Or I'm oh, not sure. I, yeah, I think that is it. Yeah. Ecovative or ecovative. Ecovative. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. 
Actually, they do use reishi. Okay, uh, they it is use, reishi. Okay, they use I wasn't a type sure. Of reishi. And they also make like, I'm pretty sure it's them, but they also make like packaging materials, right? Yep. So like fully compostable because it's mushrooms, uh, packaging materials. And they basically do this. They'll grow the mushroom through a substrate through into a, a shape, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they'll put it in the oven, obviously, to kill off the, the live culture because you don't want it to continue to grow as you're, whatever, using this packaging. Um, but it's neat, you know, grow packaging. It's kind of cool. And then it will just break down when it's in the landfill. Yeah. yeah. So I've seen it done for um, glass bottles. So they create a custom mold based on the shape of that glass bottle. And then the companies will stick it in. And yeah, you just create a custom mold and grow your shape of packaging. It's just like an insulative packaging, like protective packaging. Okay. Yeah. It's not the outer box. Um, and Roberto says, love this brand. Hello. So hello. Thanks for tuning hello, in. Hello, Roberto. Awesome. There we go. Thanks for the, the kind words. Yeah. Excited yeah. to have you here. Yeah. So great. Well, again, uh, I think that's it. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about. Um, Actually, I, oh, I did. there is one thing. What's that? So right now we have Rishi available in our Thrive 6 blend. It is a hot water extract because we are focusing on the immune benefits in the Thrive 6 blend. But we do have something cool coming down the pipeline, which will be dual extract. It will be include the spores. So stay tuned. We have something cool coming. I pretty much just gave it all away. <laughs> <laughs> but stay tuned. <laughs> we don't it's have coming. a issue yet, but maybe. Uh, but if you want to give it a try and you like the Fresh Cat brand, then stick around yeah well what i'd really like to know actually and this is always a question because a lot of people say hey do you have any straight reishi and the answer for a long time and still today is no but what i always like to ask is if we did have a reishi how would you like to see it do you like it in a tincture do you like um capsules, capsules? You like straight powder one of the things about straight reishi powder is it is a little bitter so um you know for people that are a little more sensitive to to taste changes in their coffee or whatever then maybe a capsule is better so yeah. But there are ways to kind of get around the bitterness. I know if you're making a smoothie and you add a little cocoa, so you make a chocolate smoothie, or you mix it into something with a little more flavor, you can easily mask that bitterness. Right, so, right. And yeah. some people actually enjoy the bitterness. Like yeah. this, for example, Yeah. I like it quite a bit. Earthy, a little bitter. The yeah. more bitter, the better. More bitter, the better. Yeah. Reminds me of that commercial when I was growing up, the bitter beer face. <laughs> That's still around. But, mm. uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, anyways, <laughs> maybe I Should just made that up. Should we have the bitter up. reishi face? Should that be like a, a marketing video? Yeah, but you'd have to have a positive spin on it, right? The more bitter, the better. Oh, yeah. All right, well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, the reishi stuff, because there's actually lots of exciting things coming up in the next little while, and uh, reishi is just one of them. So Yeah, so we want you all to stay tuned. Stay tuned. And thank you so much for joining us on this wonderful day. Have a great long weekend. Stay safe. If you're quarantined right now, yeah, have just stay positive and stay inside and stay healthy. Exactly. That's all you can do. Yep. Do it up. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn this off. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. See you next Friday. Have an amazing weekend.